What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I got the Glowshift wideband gauge installed on the Evo. If you didn't see the last video, I also picked up a boost and oil pressure combo gauge from them as well. I also believe that I have fixed my Evo scan issues. I haven't fixed the problems, but I figured out what the issue was. I won't be able to get it fixed in this video, but I'll explain it later on. I'm excited to get the rest of these gauges installed, so stay tuned. <laughs> that I went with instead of going with the usual three the boost oil pressure and AFR I decided to stick with just two gauges so I've got the wideband AFR and then I went with this one that's actually a combo gauge boost will read at the top up there and then oil pressure will read at the bottom the main reason that I went with this is because I got tired of looking for gauge pods here is the pod that I decided to go with I found it on eBay it comes from this company called I do 3d prints.com and it says if anything cracks splits melts whatever you, sh you shoot them an email and they said they will replace it free of charge. It's a lifetime warranty, and it's a much, much cheaper option than some of the name brands out there. This will be perfect, though. It sits right up where the defroster is at the top. It comes with some double-sided tape and then a zip tie on here, and I'll have all three measurements in this little two-pod combo. As far as the gauge, everything that it comes with, so obviously the gauge itself, here is the power wire, a little visor for it. This is the vacuum tubing. This is the sensor that that plugs into, and the harness that runs up to the gauge. This is the oil pressure sensor. This looks like a little inline filter bracket to mount it and then the wiring harness for the oil pressure sensor. I've also read and been told that if the sensor is connected directly to the block, it can get damaged very easily. So it's best to have it away from it. I picked up this oil extension line. This end is the end that will go into the block. And then this end is where the sensor will plug into. It is just a generic extension cable. So it does come with this little mount right here for it. And then a couple of fittings. I will go ahead and tell you now though, I am I'm not planning on installing the oil pressure sensor today. I am going to go ahead and run all of my lines as if I was getting ready to install it, but I'm not actually going to connect it to the block. I believe that the oil has to be drained to do that, and I've got a couple of other things coming in that I still want to install on the car first that also require the oil to be drained. So I want to knock all of that out in one hit so I'm not wasting oil, but I will definitely be getting the boost pressure sensor installed. Again, if you didn't see the last video, definitely go check that one out, but this is where I left off. Here is my wideband it has been reading perfect. I just can't get it to data log and to EvoScan. Everything is just temporarily connected up right here. I'm going to install the power and ground harness last for this gauge. It should be fairly easy since I have everything else already connected up in there. I know that I'm probably going to need a few pieces, a T-piece or something like that for this sensor, and then I don't know what I'll need for the pressure gauge. Like I said, this is a generic line, so I'm sure there's something else I'll need for that. But I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood and just start taking a look around and see where I'm going to run all of these lines to. So for the most part, I have figured out where I'm going to route my lines and I will show you that in a little bit. But down here, this is where I'm going to go through into the car. And it's kind of funny because when I installed the wideband, the grommet that I went through was already cut. So I'm assuming the previous owner put a wideband through that grommet as well. And then I decided to go through this grommet on the side over here. And lo and behold, it is already cut and has a little hole through it as well. I thought I was getting a fairly stock car, but it looks like he may have done a lot more to this thing than what I thought. Either way, it actually works out well for me because this is already cut. It's already got the hole through it, so that's where I will be going through. I'm going to start from the engine bay. I'm going to start where I know my lines are going to connect up here, and then I'm going to run everything into the car. I am missing one piece in my kit. It says that the Glow Shift kit is supposed to come with a T adapter, so that little piece right there, but it's not in there, but no big deal. I know Harbor Freight or AutoZone somewhere has got one, so I'm going to run up there and grab one of those. And then when I get back, I will start getting everything connected up. Just got back from Harbor Freight. I went to AutoZone and then I went ahead and checked online at Home Depot and Lowe's. None of them carried a T adapter that all three ends are eighth inch. I went ahead and got on Amazon. They have everything. So I ordered a five pack of these things. They had the option for plastic and brass. I went ahead and opted for the brass fittings. So not a big deal. I got them. It 
just sucks because I can't get that attached on there today. I know that this is where I'm going to cut to add my T adapter into. So I'm just going to start here with my vacuum line and then I will work my way to where I want to put the sensor at and then I will work it from there all the way to the grommet going inside the car. Boost sensor is mounted up and then I've got the harness ran to the inside. So here's where it will come off of. It will tee it. I haven't cut anything yet, but then it will just plug into the sensor right there. Harness is plugged into the back of the sensor and then it's running down to the bottom. I zip tied it to all of this wiring right here. It goes all the way into the back underneath there. Here is where it comes into the wheel well. I've got it zip tied along the wiring harness for the side markers over here. Here's where the side marker plugs in it. And then I put my wire harness through this little hole right here. It drops straight down and then goes straight through the hole where the grommet's at. I'm not gonna do anything on the inside of the car just yet. I wanna go ahead and get the oil pressure sensor mounted up and get that wire ran to the same place. And then I will work on getting everything ran on the inside. pressure line is ran. We'll start from the grommet right here. So same thing as the other one we just went up over. Everything is zip tied to the side marker light all the way around to where it goes into the engine bay. Again, everything's pretty much routed the same way up top. And then here is where things are just a little bit different. I've got this bushing zip tied on there right now. I really want to mount it right here. I would like for the sensor to just be able to kind of just sit like this. I believe that is for the stock charge pipe going into the intake. The aftermarket ETS ones did not have anything to mount right here. I do have the bolt that goes in there. The problem is, is that the holes for the bushing are just a little bit too small. So I may drill those out, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it temporarily zip tied. And then here is where the harness terminates into the sensor. I'm still not exactly sure how I'm gonna run this oil line. So it's gonna go over. Here it is coming out the other side and it's gonna connect into right here. Here's the oil line. And then this is the bolt that's gonna come out. The problem is, is I've heard that this bolt is a little bit bigger. I'm not sure exactly what size it is yet, but I will let you know before this video is over. And then I need to get a little adapter that's going to connect this size to that one. Fast forward to the future. Here is that fitting. It came in the middle, but again, I'm not putting it on right now. It should be a 1 8 to 3 8 inch adapter. So you would remove the plug from the block. This would thread in. And then this little adapter right here, this came with the stainless line that's already on the car. So this end threads into this. And then the other end of this is beveled and that goes into the stainless line. Again, I have not removed the bolt from the block myself. So this is just what I have found online. So take it with a grain of salt, but it should work from what I've read. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick these up. It's the next day. I finished running all the wires into the interior right here. So I'm going to try to open it up. I'm going to try to pull some of these panels off and see if I can't figure out where it is coming through.
sensor harnesses are ran into the car. So here's what I did. You can see the little grommet down here. And then again, there was already a hole cut. So this is where they came through. You do have to use some kind of fishing line to run it through there. I just used this little coat hanger. It took me a few times of going back and forth just to kind of see where it was at, kind of filling around with my finger. And then I finally just kind of came on the inside. And after, you know, just wiggling it around, it finally just went through. And then I just used some of the electrical tape to attach the harnesses to the coat hanger and then ran them through. You see where I just ran it up? I brought it underneath this big harness right here. And then I just zip tied it to the ethanol monitor gauge and the backup camera. So from here, I know that my wideband harness and the power harness for the boost and pressure gauge are going to have to come up with these wires. And the only power and grounds that I don't have connected yet are for the boost and pressure gauge. I'm going to get that wired up so that everything will have power and ground. I can probably go ahead and hopefully start putting some of this back together. I may wait to just test it out beforehand. But after I get that done, then I can start working on putting all of these wires up towards the vent up here. All the power and grounds are wired up. I didn't film everything because I've been pretty much doing this in the last couple of videos too. So same process, but you can see where all my grounds are connected at up there on that bolt. I have all of my switched power sources going from the blue wire right there. And then I have all of my constant power sources going into this white wire. And then each one of these is going to go into one of the ADA fuses. The blue wire, the switched power source will go into the third slot up there, which is the gauges. And then the white wire, the constant power source will go up there at the top into that that fuse slot which is for the power door locks. So I'm going to get these connected to these ADA fuses, get them plugged in, and then I can't exactly start the car right now because it's jacked up so because it's at an angle it actually won't let me turn the key. So I'm going to get all of that connected and then get the car back on the ground and then test the gauge out. is turning on. I don't know if the sensors are working because obviously they're not plugged into anything, but they are giving me a readout. A little T adapter for the boost line is supposed to come in the mail later, so I will connect that and show you. But for now, since everything appears to be turning on and working, I'm going to go ahead and start running the rest of the lines up to the defroster up here. All of my wire harnesses are ran to the defroster up here. This, without a doubt, is the absolute biggest pain in the butt of this entire process. So, of course, you have to drill a hole somewhere for all of the wiring to go through. You can see right up in there, that is where I chose. All I did was drill a hole, and then I used my Dremel with a little attachment to widen the hole out. You should be able to see it a little bit better right there. Basically, what I had to do was just shove each one in there. I started with the biggest wiring harness first, so that would be the one for the wide band. And then once I got it up in there, you just kind of have to use some tweezers and then I had some needle nose pliers just to kind of move it around and eventually fish it up through the top. It's probably taken me about an hour to get all four of them done. Most of them, the links turned out to be very, very good. The only one that I'm worried about is this one right here. This is either for the boost or the oil pressure. I don't remember which one this one is. I did do a little test fit with all the wires. They're all good except for the short one, like I just said. So I am going to have to like extend this one. I was going to try to reroute it, but it's not possible because of where it's coming up at. So I don't know why this one just turned out to be just a little bit shorter, but what I'm going to do is just cut it back here and then splice a few wires in there, put some heat shrink over it, and it should look pretty good.
finished extending the wires and I went ahead and just ran it all the way up to the top. I've got it connected to the gauges already. This is the best way to do it in my opinion because it hides everything. You don't see all those extra wires. You got all that heat shrink to cover everything up. I did go ahead and turn everything on. Everything seems to be working correctly. Again, I don't have everything connected up front yet, so it's not going to be accurate right now. I tidied up all of my wiring too, so everything is kind of zip tied away and out of the way. I really wanted to test at least the boost gauge out, but unfortunately the T fittings that I ordered are delayed or they got lost in the mail for some reason. Luckily, I remember that I bought this when I had the Focus ST just to do some measuring on the vacuum. And if I recall correctly, it did come with a T-piece adapter. Here it is, it is a plastic one. It's not brass like the ones that I ordered, but I may just replace it whenever they come in. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one connected with the tubing and then the little inline filter and see what kind of reading I get. does appear to be working. I'm not sure what the vacuum is normally on the Evos. If I hit the gas a little bit, the numbers do change. I would expect it to go a little bit more into boost, but I'm not really going to be playing around with it too hard right now. I've thrown a quite a few bolt-ons and I don't have a tune yet, but it's nice to see that this thing has given me a readout. As far as the gauge install goes, I am going to call it quits for this video. In the next video, I will get the gauge pod mounted up and get the gauges actually mounted into everything. For anyone interested in the Evo scan issues that I was having, the reason that you cannot data log with the glow shift wideband is because the outputs on the controller are analog outputs. I was confused. I kept comparing comparing these to what the AEM gauge has, but the AEM gauge actually has analog outputs and it also has serial outputs as well. From my understanding, the analog outputs will work, but you have to actually splice them into the rear O2 sensor. I did test an actual serial output anyway. After I thought about it, I knew that my ethanol content monitor over here had a serial output, so I went ahead and connected that one up to the wideband monitor, and sure enough, it actually gave me a readout. So I know that my serial to USB adapter works now, and I know why I could not get a out before. So I'm going to be on the lookout for a used AEM gauge or a used Innovate wideband gauge because I know both of those have serial outputs. I did want to do a little temporary mock-up fit before I ended this video. This is how it'll look. You can kind of see from the driver's perspective here. You've got both of your readouts over here. The glare from the sun is kind of throwing off the LED lights, but it looks really, really good. I really like the gauge pod. I wish that there was some way for me to tighten these things up from the inside, but I'm going to have to figure out a way to snug them down. Close the garage door down. This should give you a little bit better view of kind of how it's going to look so you know sitting back right here you can pretty much choose any color that you want over there and then you've got the ethanol monitor down here so all four readouts like i said i am ending the video here i will permanently install the pod in the next video we are going to be going to race wars this weekend we're going to be taking jagger out there so we won't be staying too long but i'm going to get some footage of that hopefully i can put some of that in the next video if you like the video please hit the like button if it helped you out with your install in any way please hit that like button go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're at it and i will Catch you guys next time.